Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Anna Murphides with Lending Hearts Counseling and today's video is going to be all about thoughts again and how they manifest a reality that we don't want to experience. So a lot of focus on thoughts lately, um, a lot of really powerful psychology and uh, counseling tools are based on cognitive behavioral therapy, which essentially means your cognition is the way that you cognitively perceive the world with your thoughts, your interpretations that you have internally in your mind through your thoughts. So, and this is taken out of real life context with people that I work with and even myself. So now that we know how powerful our, our thoughts are and the predominant thoughts that reside in our mind are what shape our reality because those predominant thoughts are what produce the predominant emotions, which is energy in motion, which is your aura, your energetic field. And because we are a resonant universe, then that energetic field is what is being used to attract our life experience. And that's why, um, psychologists and spiritual teachers and other clinical counselors, they always say the universe will deliver who you are, not what you want. Because if you perhaps want a new job, but who you are inside is someone who is having thoughts such as, but who's going to hire me? Um, how is my application going to be noticed amongst 50,000 others. There's going to be so many other people applying for that job. I'm never going to be able to get it. Uh, I'm not smart enough or I don't have this. It's to this. It's to that. All these thoughts that are coming in, if they are predominantly residing with you, in particular, I'm thinking of one client who was so miserable at their job and unfortunately, when we are miserable somewhere, whether it's a relationship or a job or um, a city, a town, the universe will do everything it can to show us that we're going against our soul's uh, path. We're going, we're taking the, the path, we're not taking the path of list resistance. We're actually not following our true calling, maybe because it's a fear, maybe because... Um, we're doubting, but something in there is creating a imbalance. So when we feel, so say my, my client is in this job and they are feeling unworthy because they keep making mistakes. They feel anxiety to go to work every day. They feel, um, stupid because they have thoughts such as, why can't I do it? Why do I keep screwing up? And because they continue to screw up, they keep having this fear that they're going to do it again and disappoint themselves and others. Imagine having to go to work like that every day. How how horrible is that for your nervous system? It, it That will create the anxiety and the cortisol levels. Wow, like I can't even imagine. That really eats at you and it eats at your self-confidence. But that's how the universe is going to get you to leave your job, it's going to make you feel so uncomfortable because it's not resonating with who you are. And that's what it means to not be following your true purpose or following your life's path or um, listening to your intuition. It's when you feel that disconnect because we're supposed to always feel content and happy. When we start to feel the opposite of that, then we know that we must take action. But if our thoughts of who's going to hire me how are they going to notice my application? But I can't even do this job. How can I do this other job? All these thoughts are going to keep you stuck and not allow you to move forward. And this is how we stop our own manifestations. It's purely with our thoughts. But that's just purely because of things that we acquired when we were children. Um, another case scenario is... Uh, wanting to better yourself in a relationship and have a better relationship with your partner. If your thoughts sound like, I'm going to therapy, but she's not going to therapy, so it's never going to work. You're basically affirming to the universe what you don't want to experience simply by saying that. 
Because when you have that belief, why else would you experience anything else? It's r really that simple. And we're supposed to be able to have a belief that you can change anything. You can do anything without depending on someone else. Because that's... It's that, that is a true fact and that's where true power lies. If we depended on other people all the time to get stuff done, we would never be able to get anywhere because then we could never really count on ourselves, but we can 100% only count on ourselves and have the belief and the knowing that a thousand percent, if we want to change any relationship and we work on ourselves, it will change the relationship because working on yourself and changing who you are will bring you more of what you are. So if you're changing, guess what's going to happen? Things that are matching that vibration will come into your life. So you are literally manifesting a reality where your relationship doesn't change when you have a belief such as, I need him her to do the work as well in order for us to be happy that's not true you can be happy just purely on your own self you don't need anyone else to be happy and if you have thoughts such as say you're getting breadcrumbs in a relationship and you think no but i just want him or her you don't understand anna they give me they give me so much joy when we're together. Well, what about all the other times that you're not together? What's your belief about that time, space, and reality that they're not with you? Do you really think that you can't find anyone else? Do you really think that there's just this one person who is giving you breadcrumbs like maybe he doesn't text you in 10 days and then one day he decides to text you because they are free and available and they can have intimacy with you and then that is confused with connection uh, yeah and, and 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 the reality is i do understand the yearning of wanting to be with someone but now i also understand when we yearn to be with someone who gives us breadcrumbs that is a reflection of the, the self-worth that we have for ourselves, which is not a lot. Because if you're settling for something like, and you're fighting for someone who's given you that, then you're attracting what you think you are. You, you think you're worth just that much. And again, it's not your fault. It's just, it's, it's just childhood wounds. No one escapes childhood wounds. I'm, Sorry that this is reality, but it's true fact. We're all born with our traumas, whether, you know, there's an ACE score that test that you can take and then you can get your trauma score and it could be one and it could be 10, but whatever it is, we all acquire it. We all have an attachment style. We all experience things in our life that create our core beliefs, which then become the lenses of perception that we see life through and the thoughts that come in are actually stemming just from that. So if we watch our thoughts, then we can change our reality. So if you, the thoughts are coming in, who's going to hire me? How are they going to see my application? But I live in Vancouver and there's going to be so many other people um, applying for the job. What are the chances of me getting it? Think the opposite. I can't wait to get that job. My resume is worth noticing. And then envision yourself. This is what I'm going to wear to the interview. Uh, everyone's going to be fighting to hire me because why wouldn't they? I am so great. I'm so qualified. I really want to try this job. I'm so excited. I can't wait for a fresh new start. And then if you're in a relationship where you are getting breadcrumbs, I am worth more than that. I can't wait to find someone who gives me all of their attention. I am worth somebody showing up for me. I am worth somebody texting me every day. I am worth it. I deserve it. I am I am good enough. I am lovable. I am beautiful. I deserve it. And same with the change. I I I am the only person I need to count on for change. I 
I'm happy, therefore my relationship is happy. You can manifest your reality. This is what Steve Jobs was actually really good at. Um, Steve Jobs, the creator of Apple and the iPhone. He would always live in the end of his manifestation. And when his workers did not believe or think that they could achieve what he um, asked them of, so he would have an idea, right? Because we can literally bring into manifestation anything that we can imagine. If you can think it, you can achieve it. As we're celebrating today, I think it's, I can't remember what year, but today, many, many years ago, was the first day that um, Alexander Bell was able to use the telephone to call his assistant from, I can't remember what states each one of them were in, but many, many years ago, today was the first day that someone was able to communicate with somebody else via um, the telephone. So someone imagined that we can do it and then they achieved it. And Steve Jobs did the same thing. He would imagine something and knew that people can achieve it. And he would, and then if he presented something to his workers and then the workers would be like, no, that's not possible. He would say to them, what if your life depended on it? Then would you do it? And then they would say, well, if my life depended on it, then maybe, yes, I can. So he created that little glimpse of hope. So his workers from going to, that's impossible. Now they went to, yes, there is a possibility. He harvested that potential of the possibility. And sure enough, his workers would go home and they would come back and they would... Uh, show Steve Jobs his product. And thank you so much to the YouTuber that taught me this. I will link her name below. Um, I don't remember it off by heart, but I do remember running into her video about Steve Jobs and I've watched documentaries on him. I've super, and I've even, there's actually even a movie on him as well that you can watch and his ability to yeah manifest and have no doubt about his manifestations N no thought would come in that would prevent him from living in the end and yes of course he had other things that were not the best about him uh, apparently he was not very nice in other departments of his life of his life which again um just highlights the fact that we all have our own traumas and trials and tribulations so maybe we can excel in something but then we might not be really good at something else everyone has something to work on even steve jobs he had a lot of stuff that he needed to work on too um i hope that you found this video helpful if you liked it please hit that thumbs up button and remember that you can create the life that you want at any time. It is never too late. Just live in the end and don't have any doubt that it can happen to you because yes, it can. The only difference between someone that's getting it and someone that's not getting it is the belief that they can and there is no doubt. No doubt. I had, I have never had a doubt that I can get any job that I wanted. I never had a doubt in myself that I can get a job. Always. I can always get a job. Whatever job I envisioned that I would do, it would just be done because I never doubted myself that I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, I, I, and, I, and I'm not sure why that came about me, but that's how it is. But I do have a thing with a masculine. That is where my trials and tribulations lie. And self-worth issues with um, friends, or I had self-worth issues with friends, and feeling not good enough. And with a masculine, I would manifest my reality of like, if, some, if somebody was um, starting to date me and show me attention, I would have a disbelief that that was happening. Is this really true? Can this really last? Is this really happening? Are they really saying that to me? And then I would start to get all weird and anxious and scared that they're going to leave, etc., etc. And I would literally manifest that reality for me. So they would end up just, yeah, walking away because I was becoming too much because I was too much for myself, my thoughts about who I was. I could never just be like, oh, this is great. Yeah, of course I'm worth it. Of course they want to give me attention. Why wouldn't they? Instead, I would call my friends and be like, oh my God, what? why do they like me? Uh, is, this, is this for real? What are they seeing me? Uh, is this actually going to last? 
why why do they want to talk to me they're talking to me like they're saying that about me like, like i was doubting so if i'm doubting that someone if i'm doubting that i'm this person why would that person continue to think that i'm this person so naturally they're gonna think my thoughts that i am too much i'm too this i'm too that i'm too clingy i'm too needy blah blah blah, blah, blah. so then that's what i would create constantly in my life <sighs> until I learn to control my thoughts until I yeah and I'm still controlling my thoughts actually on that one yeah it's really hard that's my big lesson of this lifetime is the masculine damn you masculine but I will master you uh thank you so much as always for watching uh always in my love and gratitude for this opportunity and I will see you in my next video thank you